Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome to our vascular sonography register review. Feel free to pause the video after I ask the question. Give enough time to answer it before I answer it. Let's get started. Question one. This patient has a post-op intervention throughout blood around an arterial occlusion in the lower extremity. The procedure involved the destruction of valves and placing the large end to the proximal area while the small end was placed on the distal end. What type of procedure was performed? A, reverse saphenous vein graft. B, in situ saphenous vein graft, C, extra anatomic procedure, or D, PTFE procedure, or polytetrafluorothylene graft. The answer is B, in situ saphenous vein graft. Question number two. This patient is at most risk for what? A, pseudoaneurysm, B, entrapment syndrome, C, embolization, or D, endoleak? The answer is C, embolization. Okay, we're gonna have a bonus question right here. What type of aneurysm is this? This is called the saccular aneurysm where the artery will bulge on one side. Question number three. The positive shift Doppler spectral waveform in this ultrasound was taken during what? A, deep inspiration. B, deep expiration. C, during active compression. Or D, after augmentation. The answer is D, after augmentation. So this waveform or this Doppler represents venous insufficiency and the positive Doppler shift is represented above the baseline going towards the transducer. And this will occur after augmentation. So the sonographer will compress the calf, which is right here indicated by the waveform below the baseline. Once the sonographer releases, then flow will start to move retrograde or above the baseline. Question number four, what does this ultrasound demonstrate? A, pseudoaneurysm, B, graft migration, C, graft limb compression, or D, endoleak? The answer is D, endoleak. Question number five. During positive pressure breathing, a patient inspires. What happens to the diaphragm as a result of the intrathoracic pressure and the hepatic venous flow below the level of the xiphoid process? A, the diaphragm flattens and hepatic venous flow decreases. B, the diaphragm becomes a concave shape and hepatic venous flow increases. C, the diaphragm becomes a convex shape and hepatic venous flow decreases. Or D, the diaphragm flattens and hepatic venous flow increases.
The answer is D, the diaphragm flattens and hepatic venous flow increases. Question number six, click on the structure that directly carries blood from the gastrointestinal tract, gallbladder, pancreas, and spleen to the liver. Where would you click on this image? The answer is right here. This is the portal vein. Question number seven. The lesser saphenous vein is located where? A, between the crural fascia and the muscular fascia. B, located in the hypodermis layer. C, between the greater saphenous vein and the femoral vein. Or D, between the superficial fascia lata and the epidermis. The answer is B, located in the hypodermis layer. Question number eight, which of the following is considered a venae competentes? A, internal jugular vein, B, inferior vena cava, C, basilic vein, or D, gastrocnemius vein? The answer is D, gastrocnemius vein. A vena competentes is a vein that is paired and runs along an artery. So you'll have two veins in an artery. Question number nine. This picture was recorded on a patient who has a complete CCA or common carotid artery occlusion. Click on the antigrade flow. Where is the antigrade flow? The answer is right here. Sometimes these patients with CCA occlusions will have anti-grade flow in the ICA and retrograde flow in the ECA. And other times you'll have patients who will have anti-grade flow in the ECA and retrograde flow in the ICA. Question number 10. What would be the reason for a patient to return to the hospital 24 hours after a post-ablation of the greater saphenous vein? A, tightening cessation in the leg, B, cramping in the surrounding area of incision. C, pain, bruising, swelling, relieved with medication, but with a body temperature of 36.1 degrees Celsius. Or D, pain, swelling, warmth, and dyspnea. The answer is D, pain, swelling, warmth, and dyspnea. Question number 11. All of the following are contraindications for a pseudoaneurysm closure except A. Inability to compress the neck to stop flow. B. Patient is anticoagulated. C. Patient is unable to tolerate procedure. Or D. The width of the pseudoaneurysm base is less than one centimeter. The answer is D, the width of the pseudoaneurysm base is less than one centimeter. Question number 12, which letter indicates the occlusion? And the arrow here indicates the direction of blood flow. So where on this image indicates the occlusion? The answer is C, so right here, Blood flow will stop here and then flow down here and then move through here to perfuse this side. Question number 13. In this image, what is the best way to make the spectral waveform on the left look like the waveform on the right? A, decrease the PRP to increase the PRF. B, increase the PRP to decrease the PRF. 
C, increase the baseline and decrease the wall filter, or D, change the cosine angle from 0.5 to 1 to have the greatest Doppler shift. The answer is A, decrease the PRP to increase the PRF. Question number 14. Which artifact will mimic an aortic dissection? A. Propagational speed error artifact. B. Grading lobe artifact. C. Side lobe artifact. Or D. Mirror imaging artifact. The answer is C. Side lobe artifact. Question 15, which of the following is the reason why a patient would need to have an ultrasound within 24 to 72 hours after a benefit procedure? A, finish treatment with US guided sclerotherapy. B, remove the excess veins. C, confirm occlusion and rule out DVT. Or D, perform an ankle brachial index exam. The answer is C, confirm occlusion and rule out DBT. A benefit procedure is basically having a radiofrequency ablation. Question 16, which of the following in some cases will cause less blood flow to the ears, toes, nipples, knees, nose, or digits? A, killing passer syndrome. B, Rulu syndrome or Rolet syndrome. C, paget shorter syndrome or D, Raynaud syndrome? The answer is Raynaud syndrome, D. Be weary as you're going through your board registry of distractor words. Sometimes the correct optional answer will have another word that will look and sound the same as the correct answer. So read it carefully, go slow, and don't answer too fast. Make sure that you know for, that you're not choosing the distractor word. Question 17. Which of the following is an indirect way to find the hemodynamically critical stenosis in the subclavian artery? A. Greater than 600 centimeters per second peak gradients in the subclavian artery. B. Retrograde spectral Doppler vertebral waveforms in the vertebral artery. C. Brachial blood pressure difference of less than 20 millimeters of mercury between both arms or D, retrograde spectral Doppler internal carotid artery waveforms. The answer is B, retrograde spectral Doppler vertebral waveforms in the vertebral artery. The reason why A is not the answer is because this would be a direct way. So be careful, you have to read your question carefully this is asking for an indirect way. A retrograde waveform in the vertebral artery would be an indirect way. Question 18. Which of the following is the first vessel off the aortic arch? A. Brachiocephalic artery. B. Right common carotid artery. C. Right subclavian artery. Or D. Coronary artery. The answer is D, coronary artery. Question 19. The blank is the longest vein in the body and ascends where? A, small saphenous vein and ascends medially from the foot to the common femoral vein forming the tibial venous junction. B, a zygous vein and ascends laterally from the foot to the common femoral vein forming the saphenofemoral junction. C, greater saphenous vein and ascends medially from the foot to the common femoral vein, forming the saphenofemoral junction, or D, inferior vena cava, and ascends centrally from the iliac veins to the right atrium, forming the right atrial IVC junction.
The answer is C, greater saphenous vein, and ascends medially from the foot to the comofemoral vein, forming the saphenofemoral junction. Question 20. What does this transverse picture of a vein demonstrate? A, high resistance. B, high transmural pressure. C, low tissue pressure. Or D, high venous pressure. The answer is A, high resistance. Question 21. Click on the structure that connects the kidney to the aorta. So where would you click on this image? The answer is right here. This is the right renal artery connects the aorta, and over here you have the left renal artery. Question 22. How do you calculate the ankle brachial index? A. Highest ankle pressure divided by the highest brachial pressure. B. Highest brachial pressure divided by the highest ankle pressure. C. Highest ankle pressure minus the highest brachial pressure. Or D. Highest brachial pressure minus the highest ankle pressure divided by the highest brachial pressure. The answer is A. Highest ankle pressure divided by the highest brachial pressure. Question 23. The vessel measured in this ultrasound drains where? A, inferior vena cava, B, a zygous vein, C, liver, or D, iliac veins. This vessel measured here is the portal vein, which drains into the liver. So the answer is C. Question 24. Click on the structure that connects the kidney to the IVC. So where would you click on the image here? The answer is right here. This structure is known as the left renal vein. Question 25. What does this picture represent? A. Briny skin discoloration. B. Dependent ruber. C. Active ulceration. Or D. Phlegmasia albidolens. The answer is B, dependent ruber. Well, that completes our first 25 questions of this vascular sonography registry review. I'll hurry and write 25 more questions and upload that video as fast as I can. I'm Jim with UltrasoundBoardReview.com. Thank you so much for watching.